everybody. Let's give this problem a try. So I was already contemplating that we're going to use a delta to y transformation, so I kind of loaded this up in advance. But it looks to me like these three form a delta, or these three form a delta. So then I'm just going to pick one of the two and know that you can always use the other one and you'll still get the right answers. So if I pick these three, just pay attention to the nodes. Like if I call this A, B, and C, that's over here, A, B, C, corresponding to A, B, and C. So you leave these nodes as they are. And then you just change the resistors within them from a delta kind of shape to a Y shape. So this bottom drawing, I'm going to erase these three because my intention is to replace them with a Y like this. Here, here, here. And if I just look at the pattern, like node A is here. So opposite node A is RA. So that would be the 20 ohm. Opposite node B is this one. So this is RB. Opposite node C is this one. So this one is RC. And then I can just use those values and just plug in the number. So RB is 60, RC is 120 over 120 plus 60 plus 20. So that's 200. Punch that in the calculator. Okay, RC 120, RA 20 over 200, punch in the calculator. Okay, and then RA is 20, RB is 60 over 200. Punch in the calculator, and we got all three. So R1 is this one, so that's 36. R2 is next to node B, so that's this one over here, 12. And then RC, and R3 is next to node C, so right here, 6. Right, already this looks much easier to analyze. Like the 24 and the 36, you can just combine those in series. How about I just do that right now? So that would be 60. So I'm just going to draw that right now, kind of to save space. Okay, so this is 60. And then the 14 and the 6 you can combine in series, so that would turn into 20. So I'm just going to write that right now, here. Okay, and then if you look at it, you could combine these in parallel. Right, so what is 60 and 20 in parallel? 1 over 20 plus 1 over 60, and then take the reciprocal. So 1 over 20 is like 3 over 60, so that's 4 over 60. Take the reciprocal is 15. 15. Okay, and then take, there's the 12, and then the 43. So then we can combine all four of these in series, so that's 20, 32, 75, right? So, so the whole thing combines to be 75, just to save space. I'm just going to draw it right here like this. Right, and the voltage source was 750. So that means we know the current going like this is coming out of the source 750 over 75, 10 amps. So that means coming out of the source is 10 amps, like this, like this. Which means we can actually answer part D, the power so notice that the voltage is positive going down and the current is positive going up. So it's actually negative 750 times 10, so negative 7,500 watts. 
negative meaning power is being delivered, right? Which is what we expected. So there's part D. And then if you look right here at this node here, see how we got 10 amps going in and then part of it goes this way and part of it goes this way. I'll call this I1 and I'll call this I3. There's already an I2, so I'll call it I3. Okay, let's focus on that. 10 amps. And then it splits this way, this way, which means it's a current divider, right? Because part of the current goes this way. Part of the current goes this way. And then let's just use the current divider equation. So this was 60, this was 20. So current divider equation, I S times 20 over 60 plus 20. So that's one fourth of 10 amps, which is 2.5 amps. Okay, and then over here, current divider, I source times 60 over 60 plus 20. Okay, so that's three fourths of 10 amps, which is 7.5 amps. Okay, so we got, if we look at the picture up here, it's Right, currents coming this way, I1, is 2.5 amps. So we actually answered part A already. And then the current here is 7.5 amps, which means you can solve for the voltage here, you can solve for the voltage here using Ohm's law. Okay, but then also part B is asking for the voltage here, can we get it? Yes. Let's use KVL. Okay, so let me draw this again. So just to focus our attention here. Okay, so I'm going to just label this right here V1. And I'll label this over here V3. And then already here we have labeled V. So let's just do KVL here for this loop right here. So let's say you go clockwise, so this way. So that's negative V3 plus V1 plus V going this way. So what I just said was negative V3 plus V1 plus V equals zero. That's KVL for this loop uh, going clockwise. And we want it to solve for V, so just move these on the other side. So V is V3 minus V1. Can we get V3? Yes, from Ohm's law, because we know the current already The current here we just solved earlier was 7.5 amps. The current I1 is 2.5 amps. So what is V3? The voltage is positive this way, the current is positive this way, so V equals positive IR. 7.5 amps, 14 ohms. And V1, voltage is positive this way, current is positive this way, so V equals positive IR, so 2.5 amps, 24 ohms. Punch in the calculator, 45 volts. Okay, so we got this is 45 volts. Also know that if we know the voltage, 45, and we know the resistance, 60, we can even solve for the current here. Let's call this I4. I4 has got to be V over R. 45 over 60. So that is 
0.75. Okay, so we know the current here, 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 here. What if you want the current here, which is what it's asking for in part C? If you just look at this node right here, I'll just draw that node right here. There's I4, 0 0.75. There's uh, this one over here, 7.5. And then I2 is what we're after. Can we get it? Yes, KCL, right? Add up all the currents. Let's say you just pick positive going in or out, doesn't matter. Let's say positive going out. So then I2 is positive. This would be negative. This would be negative because going in equals zero. That's KCL for this node. Solve for I2, move these on the other side. So that would be 8.25, right? There we go. So that's part C. And so that's all the parts for this question. You can solve for everything. Like say, what is the current here? Can do. You just do KCL at this node, right? Because you know this current and you know this current. So that's the only unknown. Once you solve for this current, you know the resistance, which means you can solve for the voltage. And the only thing left is this one. Note that this resistor, this voltage source, and this resistor, they're all in series. And we already know this is 10 amps, which means this is 10 amps. And we, we know the current, we know the resistor, therefore you can solve for the voltage. And now that you know the voltage and the current everywhere, you can even solve for the power everywhere. So you can solve for everything everywhere. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, keep on practicing, keep studying, and I'll see you in the next video.